Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And in this case, we're talking about the Nashville Peacemakers. We're honored to be joined by Clemmy Greenlee, AKA Clemmy G from Tennessee. She's the founder and the CEO. And we also have Cindy Montano. She is the treasurer and program director of Back to Basics. And we'll talk all about that program and so much more. But how are you two doing? Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Great introduction. I need you on my team. (laughs) Thank you, Jeremy. We really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share Nashville Peacemakers with your audience today. Thanks so much for having us on. Absolutely. Well, you all are doing tremendous good for sure. And so let's start with a little bit of history and context because, Clemmy, this starts with your personal story. And when you look at being trafficked at a very young age, losing your son and launching this organization almost 20 years, 2023 will be 20 years. So give us a little bit of history and context for launching the organization. So, you know, real quick, I just start out. I was born in the uh, uh traumatized at the same time with two alcoholic parents. I loved them to death. They loved us to death, but I think the looker took more love than us. Um, Didn't have any guidance. The street raised me pretty much, and that's how I ended up getting snatched at 12 years old and got into the sex trafficking and then had a son at 13-year-old that I ended up losing uh, to street uh, homicide. After that, uh, I just felt like I went through, I went to hell and back and and didn't die. I was facing 20 years in prison for stabbing one of my sex traffickers, uh, perpetrators, because I wanted out and uh, was facing uh, prison time. And evidently, the man upstairs didn't want it. And here I am. And this is really how I hit the streets and, and kept running to do this organization. When you look at the work you're doing, taking those experiences, but really focusing on how do we prevent violence? How do we share love? How do we create peace? Cindy, go ahead and share some of the stats. When you look at where we are today and what's going on and the prevalence of violence, share some of the stats that you all look at on your end. Okay, so currently the homicide rate in Nashville is growing faster than the rate the city is growing. So something has to to happen to curtail that. And also, you know, according to the CDC, um, homicide is the number one cause of death of black men between the ages of 15 and 44. And, you know, that 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 that. 15, that's right in the middle of where we try to capture our youth. And so Nashville Peacemakers exist to stop the violence, specifically in um, distressed neighborhoods, by providing our three programs, which are Straight Talk, Back to Basics, and Mothers Over Murder. Let's go ahead and dive into your world, Back to Basics. And so give us an overview of that program. Okay, so um, I've been uh, fortunate to be the program director of Back to Basics since 2017, and um, that program, um, it, it basically we're teaching the girls life skills that they may or may not be getting in their current situation or home environment. Um, sometimes we're also brought in because a family member need some help to raise their kids. You know, we, we do have a single dad in our, uh, who's got a couple girls in the program right now. And so we work to, um, to teach them a work, good work ethic, uh, life skills, giving them a positive vision for themselves and, and, and helping them to understand that they have a future, that they are worthy of being loved and yeah. they are worthy of loving themselves. Yeah. And so that's kind of the the, the basis, you know, um, just real quick. One of the things that is so amazing about Clemmy is her ability to give unconditional love. And when you are on the receiving end of her unconditional love, that makes you then want to share that with others. And so that's basically, you know, the, the foundation of Back to Basics and, and all the other programs. Carry that over, Clemmy, into straight talk, working with the young men. Yeah, working with the young men is really is a challenge uh, because people don't really want to deal with uh, young black men. And let me just be specific. That's already out of control. Um, I was given that vision by my son uh, during his uh 
uh, death. He came to me and told me to go out here and get the boys. Uh, so I didn't know what I was doing, so I just hit the streets and just start getting them. Didn't come in, let me talk to you, let me talk to you. I tell people all the time, we I love on them boys because they want love, because they don't have the male figure. If they these boys was with me uh, right at two years. So if they didn't want help, they wouldn't have been with me, a female alone. I, and I done this alone without other men. I needed other men, but they would come in and, and say the, the easy way out. They got nasty attitudes. They always talking about I'm not their father and things like that, which they're to say that but that don't mean you run away from them so just knowing that i kept coming back and kept coming back they started feeling like they was important and they felt like they could make some um changes and a lot of them did through their schools through their school grades through their households and that's that's exactly what's going to happen going into next year uh i'm going to take on 10 more boys hopefully i get 10 guys this time to help me out well, talk about how the program is structured and, I mean, obviously the unconditional love and, as you say, showing up and being there, being a, a role model and a figure that they need in terms of sharing the love that they need so much in their life and the positive direction. Talk about the structure of the program. So we we hook up with a, a therapist, a, a youth counselor therapist called Eric. His name is Eric Capard. So he comes in twice a week, and and I leave the room. And so he talk he teaches teaches them anger management and self-esteem. Then I also takes them on trips so they can go see stuff like Muhammad Ali Museum. I'm trying to get them to Alabama now. And also I sit and talk with them like straight talk. I, I don't sugarcoat nothing. I don't use big fancy words. I really talk to them. And then for the first six weeks, we pretty much just listen to them. I don't know what, I don't want to know what college they want to go to, what they want to be in five years. We don't even even know that I mean, you, you got to listen to them and uh, just showing them different environments, buying them books, sending them pizzas. We bought 20 tablets for each group to make sure when the pandemic came, the COVID came, the storm came, that they still could stay connected with us through Zoom. So we send is very good in having pizza parties with them on Zoom so they don't stay get discouraged when we couldn't hook up or we couldn't touch. And we're looking for forward to going back into that next year with the help of others. Cindy, touch on the larger impact of this, because I think it's a really important context to understand these young men and women, these are future parents, role models, community leaders, business, nonprofit, education, faith, like all different sides. This is the future for our, for our community, right? And voters, yes. innovators, entrepreneurs. And so we have to be able to pour into them and give them the support to put them on the positive trajectory or else we as a community lose the advantage of putting them in a positive direction and they can easily be pulled in a negative direction. I think that's why it's so important for the community to understand the work you do really does impact the generational future for our community. Cindy, touch on that perspective of the ripple effect in the community and why this work is so important. Yes, that, that is one of the things. We say that National Peacemakers is different on purpose, and that is one of the ways that we are different on purpose. We use the word purpose because everybody is purposed. Nobody is just accidental in this world. Everybody has a purpose. And so what we do is we work to... Um, we work to end the cycle of violence, one person, one child, one family at a time. And sometimes that looks like a crossover between our programs. We may have siblings who are in back to basics with brothers in straight talk. They may have a grandmother who encountered Nashville peacemakers through mothers over murder, who then saw the value and the benefit of this life skills program for their granddaughter, their, their niece, their nephew. And so we we find that by when we engage with one member of the family, we can affect the whole family dynamic. And yeah. that is where you really start making a real difference and breaking the cycle. You know, we can try to fix one person, but if we don't fix that whole family, when they leave um, our straight talk bubble or our back to basics bubble and they go back, um, it, it, 
there's there's still that level of, of chaos, destruction, or trauma. So we really try to bring it into the whole family. Mm-hmm. And um, another way that we do that is that we don't just rely on the standard six-week program. A lot of programs will bring the kids, kids in for six weeks. After that six weeks, you get your little certificate or whatever, and, you know, good luck, have a good life. What we find is, you know, Clemmie told you, the first six weeks, we listen to those kids. They might sit there and say nothing for that whole six weeks. But the thing is, they keep showing up. And if they keep showing up, we're going to keep showing up. And that's, you know, and that's a huge, huge, huge life lesson for them to carry on into school. You're not going to succeed in school if you don't show up. You're not going to succeed in a job if you don't show up. So showing up, if that kid shows up, that shows that that kid's hearing yeah. something. That child, that youth has, is is getting something. And it's up to us as the facilitators to figure out what it is. And then we structure the programs around the individual needs of those individual <clears throat> children, those individual people. What would you add to that, Clemmy, and carry that into when you look at working with the mothers, mothers over murder? Well, I mean, everything she just said, what has happened, me and Cindy has really filled in the gap of the missing programs that's been shut down in all of these communities. There's no, there's nothing out here for them. I was talking about that yesterday real quick. If we go to all 50 states, every time y'all travel, somebody tells y'all, don't go over there to that neighborhood. Don't go down that street. Don't go back there by yourself. That's because all of those neighborhoods is us. And that's because everything is gentrified there, everything is property there, and there is lack of programs there. So it got taken away from us. So we are in the same situation in Nashville. Everybody just overlook it because all they want to think about is the tourism, the Grand Ole Opry, and everything else, and the tall and skinnies and the cranes. You don't want to talk about that back street back there, which is still human beings. So what Nashville Peacemakers has done is filled in the gap of programs that either your mother make a dollar two more or a dollar two less, and you didn't get to get in anyway. And so for us not to even have the funds that I feel we deserve, we have done something major. So that is what we're all about, filling in the gap of the lack of programs and the gentrification and doing the best we can to try to make sure your parents and your grandmother or your child don't get shot. Well, and talk about Mothers Over Murder. Give, give some illustration there. So the Mothers Over Murder, I started out with three mothers. I'm up to 45 mothers. I uh, probably would have been more than that if I throw myself out there, but I can't do to funds. What I do is just get them a place to come in and vent, cry, break bread, throw a trash can or whatever. We've tried to bring in therapists. That's what we really need That because we don't have $100 an hour. We don't, we don't get to get the therapy that we really need. I've done this because I know how it felt when they called me and told me about my son. But I, I take them on retreats. I try to get their mind off of everything, bills, the death, the birthdays, and all of that, and just start, you know, have fun, act silly. We're getting ready to go on one this Friday. Uh, what it has allowed uh, the program to do is some of the mothers have now become the director of Mothers Over Murder, the assistant directors. One of them is going to be the secretary of the, of the Moms Over Murder. So I gave them time to cry, heal, get out, we'll never get closure. I don't care if they caught the perpetrator, gave them life in prison. There's no such thing when people tell us we finally got closure. We didn't get closure. We might have got justice, but we never would get closure. So that's very important to me to just love on these moms, try to help them with flowers, try to help them with gas, and sometimes pay we pay a bill for them because you're in such a depression when you get that phone call, you're not going to work. And some of them end up getting fired. And some of them, they can't work for another month or two. Who's paying their bill? Who's, who's sending them food? And this is what we do with the Mothers of America. Yeah. Cindy, let's bounce back to you. Talk about the different ways the community can help, because obviously fundraising plays a major role in this. So talk about how we can help. Yes. Okay. So National Peacemakers has always been a loaves and fishes organization. What does that mean? That means that we do a lot with a little, but we need to do more. Um, 
And to do that, we need the help of the community. We need somebody to provide us those loaves and those fishes. And they can do that by going to our website. There's a donation button on the website. Um, there is a page on the website that tells you how you can get involved in other ways um, besides just making a donation or a monetary donation. We need things like gift cards, bus passes, gas cards, um, ways that we can easily meet a need in the community um, and not necessarily pull away from the operation budget of Nashville peacemakers. And um, we, we need, need tutors. <laughs> tutors, yes, we need tutors for our kids. The pandemic did not do anybody any academic favors whatsoever. Um, last year, I personally put in over 300 tutoring hours to help get make sure that our back to basic girls would walk across that graduation stage, and they did. Um, so we need we need both human and financial capital. We need volunteers. We need donations. We um, need a building to work out of. <laughs> we need a building to work out of. And um, we are, you know, we have we have a great board that is working and guiding us towards this um, capacity building that we're doing. And um, we're, we're, we're constantly looking to the future so that Nashville peacemakers will continue on for many, many years to come and that Nashville will benefit from seeing these generations of violence, this cycle broken. Yeah. You also have a number of events and easy ways for the public to get involved on that side too. Go ahead and wrap up with website. Where do we go to make the donations, to find all the opportunities to serve and get involved with the events? So where do we go to learn more and get involved? Okay. Our website is NashvillePeacemakers.org. And over the next year, 2023, we will be celebrating our 20th anniversary. We will be doing our third annual citywide baby shower in July. Uh, we always need donations for that. Diapers, baby wipes, things that, you know, gently use clothing. We um, will be in December celebrating our fifth annual Mothers Over Murders d dinner. And um, you can reach out to us through the website if you'd like to get involved in serving or donating to support that event as well. The website again is nashvillepeacemakers.org. So nashvillepeacemakers.org, which makes it easy. Clemmy, Cindy, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. All right. Thank you for having us. You have a thank blessed you, Jeremy. Time. 